Okay, this is just a quick video to talk about fat because the, it seems like something people can't get out of their mind, this idea of good fats, good fats, I need good fats. I've never in my whole life seen a person have any type of problem from a fat deficiency. I've never once seen a case, never seen a case in conference, never seen a case in a book. All day long, I see tons and tons of diabetes, hypertension, obesity. That is so common, they're all just considered normal, normal aging. They're not. Um, so I just want to say a few things about fat. And you know, I only have time to make one really detailed video uh, when I've got time to make videos at all. So I'm not going to have a whole bunch of references and stuff. Just, just real quick on what's the scoop on fat. Okay, Nathan Pritikin said, Pritikin said it best, fat is bad. I say the only good fats are fiber fat, meaning the fats that come from conversion of dietary fiber from plant foods in your gut into short-chain fatty acids. And that's like acetate, propionate, and butyrate, the colon lining cells, colonocytes, um, colon for colon sites mean cells. They're the ones, they make those into tight junctions and that prevents leaky gut. Acetate and propionate, they're absorbed through the portal vein, go up to the liver. The liver can make them into whatever fats it wants to. Um, and of course, there's a little bit of other fats, the essential fats, you know, like the omega-3 and the omega-6. But you really only need those in pretty minimal quantities, and you get plenty of them from just eating plant foods. By the way, if you want to read more about the details, McDougall wrote a pretty good summary of uh, how you don't need anything but a little plant foods to get all the omega-3s you need. And uh, fish get them from the plants as well. So anyways... Um, if you look at a carbohydrate, you know, a molecule of glucose or fructose, six carbon molecule, um, the body absorbs that and can metabolize it. All right. If you look at a protein, the protein is broken down into little amino acids, typically absorbed in, you know, amino acid, dipeptide, tripeptide. That's about it. So those are safe little things. But fats are not like that. Fatty acids are absorbed in total, they're big things, relatively speaking. Uh, most common saturated fats, palmitate, 16 carbon, you know, with no double bonds, it's a saturated fat. And they can disrupt blood flow. Um, literally, when you, you were not designed to eat large amounts of fat on a routine basis. They make your blood thick, low formation, blood sludge. Um, and the brain can't burn them. The brain, neuron cells. The astrocytes can burn some fats, but the neurons themselves run too fast with too many things going on. They need to burn glucose. Um, and now it's going to get much worse. The, just like we know that fats are amphiphilic, like an amphibian lives on land and water, they're polar or nonpolar, they can disrupt the gut blood barrier and cause leaky gut. That's the mechanism, main mechanism for autoimmune diseases that also allows gram negative endotoxins to get across the gut lining and cause meat related endotoxemia. Um, the thick blood predisposes to clot formation. It, decreases oxygen delivery to tissues. It causes, increases atherosclerosis risk, which increases the risk of myocardial infarction and death. Okay, disruption of the blood-brain barrier. Now, this is a big new one. I've been thinking about this lately because I've been reading a lot about causes of cognitive decline, neurodegeneration, and there's a surprisingly large amount of information about fat, especially saturated fat, from the articles I've read so far, disrupting the blood-brain barrier. And that's going to disrupt the neuronal milieu. A neuron needs to, the reason you have a blood-brain barrier is so the neurons can function with really stable ionic gradients and a real stable external chemistry uh, milieu. Uh, so the action potentials fire quickly and everything runs correctly. So with disruptions of the blood-brain barrier, that's bad. That means fat and other potentially toxic chemicals can get into the brain parenchyma and disrupt neuronal function. So they make you stupider. It can cause a little bit of brain fog and over the long run, damage to brain cells and increase risk of dementia. There's entire articles uh, written theorizing in you know good journals that uh, the way fat decreases cognitive function and predisposes to Alzheimer's disease. Um, let's see, what else? Insulin resistance. Well, insulin resistance is a much bigger deal than is widely recognized. Not only do you have insulin resistance causing diabetes in your body, but it's also damaging your brain. There are glucose type 4 transporters. Those are the ones that are dependent on insulin located in your hippocampus. Those are your most important memory cells. It's also present in the substantia nigra. Those are very important motor cells for movement. And when you damage the hippocampal cells due to uh, glucose 4 are insulin dependent due to excessive fat causing insulin resistance, you run the risk of neuronal apoptosis in your hippocampus and worsening risk of dementia. In the substantia nigra, worsening risk of Parkinson's disease. So 
Those GLU4 transporters, they need insulin. The brain does have a component of GLU4 transporters that is insulin dependent and insulin resistance does uh, damage to those areas. Okay, next uh, we talk about PUFAs and I got entirely separate lectures on PUFAs and fish oils and all that stuff. But they put in all the omega-6s and whatnot. But the bottom line is the PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids, put you at risk for lipid peroxidation, you know, to pluck off the methylene bridge hydrogen and the carbon between the two fatty acid double bonds. So those can produce toxic aldehydes. We have several lectures on this, hydroxynonanol. Hydroxynonanol, the toxic aldehyde, can damage the hippocampus, predisposing to dementia, can damage the hypothalamus, like the arcuate nucleus region, where all the, and that can predispose to obesity. It can damage the pancreas beta cells, increasing the risk of diabetes. And I think that's an increased uh, risk in particular of persons who eat a lot of uh, uh, vegetable oils, a lot of fried food. Um, even the, you know, the so-called omega-3s, Omega-3s, they increase the risk of prostate cancer and cause other problems, okay? And their health benefits in the past were exaggerated. Later on, it's been shown they're not that healthy. I recommend stay away from them. Okay, other fats, we talked about blood sludge. You make your tissues ischemic, meaning that you decrease blood oxygen delivery, then you, you increase the chance of the Warburg effect or Warburg effect, and which means hypoxia-induced mitochondrial dysfunction, whereby a cell will usually die, but they can transform and de-differentiate into an anaerobic cell and become cancer. That's the Warburg effect. Whatever tissue culture he put under hypoxia and dropped oxygen delivery by 35% or more, he could induce cancer. You know, a lot of cell death, but also cancer. So um, that's why I don't think there's any type of good fats that you should seek out. The small amount of fat you get just from eating plant foods and from the fiber in plant food and from the intrinsic fats from the phospholipid fatty acids and whatnot in your plant foods, that's enough. You don't need to seek out any more. And I think all these people are just looking for so-called good fats and, you know, they're barking up the wrong tree. Worry about lowering your total fat intake. Worry about lowering your sodium intake. That'd be my, what I would do.